What is up guys, it is Nick Che, back with the first video of 2018. First off, I just want to say Happy New Year's. Um, thank you to all my new subscribers, it's crazy, I just hit 4K. Considering I was at 1K not even two weeks ago, the growth has been super crazy the past few days. And to all my new subscribers, I just want to say hey. And so today we'll be doing a Q&A, this is the first time I've ever done something like this, so I'm excited. I asked you guys to leave questions in one of my previous videos, but I'll also be going through all the comments of other videos that you guys have had questions on and I just haven't had time to reply to just because I'm so busy. So let's jump right into it. All right, so the first question that I always get asked most is what camera I'm using, what gear, what equipment, things like that. That's an entirely new video of itself, just because I have so many different um, camera bodies, lenses that I like to use for various occasions, various settings. But just to get it out of the way, um, I shoot primarily on the Canon 6D Mark II and then the Sony A7S for video mostly. I also have a DJI Mavic Pro for drone footage, a GoPro session, some Polaroids. My stabilizer, I use the Icon Beholder DS1 and then I also have a Glide Cam. My mic, I use like the Rode Video Micro compact little thingy. And as far as lenses, I have the Canon 24-70 2.8 on the camera right now. I also have the Sigma 35 1.4 Art Series lens like a Sigma 70 to 300 just for like long shots. On my Sony a7S, I have the 28 millimeter f2 lens. That's about the entirety of my gear and my equipment as of right now. I am trying to sell my Sony a7S with the Icon Beholder DS1 gimbal. If you're interested, shoot me a comment down below and we'll get in touch because I'm really trying to sell this so I can get a different camera. I'll talk about all that later. Now, the second question that I get asked most is my music taste. Where do I find all this different background music and tracks for my different videos? And to be completely honest, um, I don't have like one specific spot. I, it takes a ton of time. Finding music is probably the longest thing of making any video, any vlog, any project because I want to find the right track that fits the mood, fits the emotions, and tells the story that I want. And a lot of it is really just going on YouTube, searching up like vlog music, background music, um, chill, lo-fi vibes kind of stuff. But it's a really like arbitrary and long process that I wish I could have a better answer to. But I mean, that's what I've done until I find a better system. I actually do have my friend Adriel, who's been on the vlogs a lot, um, she kind of like curates some Spotify playlists for me um, and that just kind of helps me pick tracks faster that I, um, she knows that I'm gonna like. A few people have been asking like what I listen to outside of vlogs and stuff. My few favorite artists, this is a hard question. In 2017, I was really, really bumping Frank Ocean. His new album was really great. Khalid, I think he's awesome. Um, Childish Gambino, he's just an OG. Post Malone, I really like Post Malone's new album. As far as like genres, I don't want to say I listen to all types of music because I don't. If I had to like generalize it, it's probably just like chill music, which is like really stupid, but that's really what it is. Um, I just kind of listen to various artists. I also like acoustic music. John Mayer always kills it. Maroon 5 is like one of my favorite bands. Rappers, Drake, diehard Drake fan, he kills it every time. Take Care and Views, probably his two best albums. Oh. Calvin Harris. Calvin Harris is probably one of the most underrated artists right now. His last album was so fire. Like, I put that on repeat all the time. I know, like, every single song on that album. Oh, Daniel Caesar. I love Daniel Caesar. His R&B, his voice just kills me. <laughs> La La Land soundtrack. I love the La La Land soundtrack. I put that on, like, every day. Um, I know every word to that album. Okay, so yeah, that's about it for my music taste. Obviously, for a lot of you new subscribers, you guys probably found my channel through the Day in My Life video or just anything Princeton related. So I know a lot of you guys have qu questions about, you know, what school is like academics what I won't be doing is answering the people who are like I have this GPA I have this SAT score do you think I can get in just because there's so many of you guys that are asking like I literally don't have the time to answer that and I apologize I wish I could help each of you individually but the questions that I will answer are kind of like general questions about like what Princeton is like how are the academics how's the food things like that so Daniel Cho asks obviously Princeton is academically rigorous do you feel constantly overwhelmed or that you have no free time while you're at Princeton and two how is the quality of the dorms and the food at Princeton all right, so question number one, do I feel like I'm constantly overwhelmed or that I have no free time? Um, I don't think I'm an expert to talk on this subject yet just because I haven't even finished my first semester. But from what I've experienced the first few months is that yes, it's academically rigorous and yes, the classes are hard, but I kind of like to say they're relatively hard. Like obviously like my friends at state schools, their classes are hard as well, but like it's just a lot more independent work. It's a lot more studying on your own. It's a lot of things that I've never I never did in high school and like and as great as Flower Mountain High School was to prepare kids for college I don't think anything will ever really prepare a student for the rigor of an Ivy League education just because Not it's not I wouldn't say it's necessarily competitive or cutthroat Like I want to get that stereotype out of the way that Ivy Leagues are cutthroat because you know people are very supportive They're very collaborative. Um, it's a environment where you can grow and, and learn a lot as a person I don't feel like I'm in an environment where people are out to get me just so that they can have the upper edge or things like that and um, do I feel like I have free time? Yes and no, like partly because I haven't been 
managing my time very well this first semester. Like I devoted a lot of my late nights to like editing these videos to put out when I sh probably should have been studying. And so this next semester is really gonna be me focusing on my academics first and then this YouTube stuff because obviously I'm at Princeton for my academics. How's the quality of the food and the dorms? Dorms are actually super lit. Like my, my residential college, which is Whitman, is one of the best because it has AC, it has really nice furniture. Like the beds and like the bathrooms, they're, they're fine compared to you know a lot of other schools so I'm really grateful I'm not complaining about that food is honestly like top-notch I'm not complaining the dining hall like it does get a little bit repetitive but there's so many different options that you can go to different um, residential colleges and eat and it's all gourmet like the chefs cook it up every day you get to know the dining hall staff really well and it's a really nice environment during Christmas and Halloween they like decorate the dining hall to look like very festive and things like that which is which is super cool someone asked not necessarily a college question but where do you see yourself in five years five years technically I'd be out of college Probably my first year. Um, potentially grad school, I'm not exactly sure. Okay, something I want to make clear. In my day in my life video, I said I was economics. I kind of just said that because I didn't really know what else to say. Um, possibly international relations, possibly sociology, possibly economics, also possibly visual arts. Since we don't have to declare it till the end of sophomore year, like I still have time to figure it out. And so a lot of people have asked like what I'm majoring in. Um, and to be honest, I really don't know. And so yeah, where I see myself in five years, hopefully like in grad school or if this YouTube thing takes off, like just making films and like producing. I think that end goal, like as of right now, like what I really want to do is I think directing will be the coolest thing, like directing movies, directing short films. What camera would you recommend for someone who's starting to vlog? I'll probably make a whole new video about this just because it's a question a lot of people have, but first things first, and you'll hear it time and time again, it's really cliche and you probably hate hearing it, but it's, like gear doesn't matter, like what gear you have necessarily isn't gonna impact the story that you're telling. Like literally these smartphones have such good cameras that you can start producing films, start producing vlogs. Like there are a few vlogs that I literally just film on my iPhone 7 Plus and it turns out great. Um, as far as like specifics, I probably recommend like the Canon Rebel T6i or to be honest, my favorite camera is probably like the Canon 60D, 70D or 80D. Any of those cameras are great. So the progression of cameras that I've had is the Fujifilm X10, upgraded to like the Canon T3i, upgraded to the Canon 60D, upgraded to the Canon 60, and then upgraded to the Canon 6D Mark II. So I've tried out a lot of these cameras and my personal recommendation are the 60, 70, 80D line. And then I recommend not buying the kit lens. Like the kit lens sucks, like you're never gonna use it. What I would recommend is if you're trying to start vlogging, um, look for a wider angle lens, like the 12 to 24. Or if you're looking to get into photography, the lens I recommend more than anything is Nifty 50. It's Canon's 50 millimeter 1.8 lens. They sell it for like 120 bucks. It's awesome, like I sold my lens, but that's what I used to shoot on all the time when I was first starting out. It produces amazing photos. It's really good for videos. You get that smooth bokeh effect. A really great setup is like those two um, body and lenses. All right, Kevin Huang asked, what type of things do you look for when applying to schools? When I was applying to schools, if I'm being completely honest, yeah, I look for prestige. Yeah, I look for the name brand schools, Stanford, Harvard, Princeton, Yale, whatever. But as far as like what I look for in a school is uh, location. I think location is super important. Like as a photographer, I kind of wanted the city vibe. And so yeah, Columbia and Stanford were some of my top two choices just because it's located in a very urban environment and I thought that's what I uh, would really like and thrive in. I mean, Princeton's great. It's in Princeton, New Jersey. It's only like an hour and a half train ride from New York. So I've been up there like four or five times already, but I do wish I had a little bit more of a city environment like um, Yale or UPenn or Columbia and things like that. But I mean, it's something to get over. Like I love, I love the town. I love the community that we're in. It does feel like a little bit of an orange bubble though. Like I don't really get out too much. And I think that's the same for a lot of other Princeton students is that not a lot of people go outside of Princeton just because you have to Uber or, or and it gets a little annoying. Other things that I look for at school are obviously like your majors. If you have an idea of like what field you want to go into, like engineering, then obviously you're going to be looking at like top engineering schools like Stanford, Harvard, UT, Princeton, whatever. And then also just kind of like the environment. And what I recommend more than anything is if you have the opportunity is to like visit a lot of these schools. First off, see if the campus is something you vibe with, like the architecture, um, the layout, the people that you see, and then just try and talk to people. Like what I've said this time and time again is that like the best way to figure out if a college is right for you is if you talk to the people there, obviously. Um, see what the students are like, see if it's a community that you feel like you'll be engaged and grow and learn a lot as a person. Okay, someone asked, do you work? Cause I see you out here flexing the Benz, my guy. Um, first off, the Benz and the BMW are my mom and dad's car, so I drive a Honda Accord. So technically, yes, I work, but it's not a full-time job and it's not like, 
minimum wage job. Um, I'm a photographer, so I do senior shoots, family pictures, events, weddings, um, video shoots, website design, and I make all my money through that. It's actually been super lit lately, just making like $250 an hour shoot. But yeah, that's how I've been able to afford all this camera equipment and travel. And, and Okay, um, Caesar Lara asked, how many all-nighters have you pulled during your time at Princeton? Actually, I have not pulled any all-nighters, and I don't think a lot of people do like to pull all-nighters because we really value our sleep. I think the latest I've ever stayed up is probably like 3 or 4 a.m., and that's literally because I was editing a video. Like, I could have gone to bed uh, way earlier. My usual bedtime is probably like 1 a.m. latest, and then I wake up around like 9 or 10, which is which is actually pretty late, um, but my classes start at 11 or 12.30 every day throughout the week, so I think it's super important to be rested. You don't want to fall asleep in your classes because that's being counterproductive. So at some point in the night, like, it's not productive to continue studying. Like, you got to put the books away. You got to, you know, just brush your teeth, go to bed. How stressful is Princeton for you? It's actually not ter terribly stressful as in like I'm not pulling my hair out, I'm not balding, I'm not getting gray hairs yet. The only stressful part I think for me has been that like in high school I was very successful and you know I achieved everything I did at a very high level but now coming to Princeton I'm surrounded by other people who are so successful and so I feel like I'm at a point where I'm almost mediocre at a lot of things I do. Like everyone's good at that, you know? So you gotta find your one niche and I'm um, really striving that. And so for me, that was, that's been photography. And videography, like once again, like I keep saying, that's kind of been stressful, but I've learned to get over it. It's gonna help me grow and mature as a person and uh, make me work harder to, you know, get back to the top. What do you hate about Princeton academically? For example, the professors, classes, etc. cetera. Okay, um, I don't know if I hate anything. It's just that like, if you get stuck with a bad professor for like a huge econ class, like it's gonna suck. Like, not that my professor's terrible, it's just like he doesn't know how to relay the topics to the students, you know what I mean? It's like, he's saying all this stuff and like we're not, relay like it's not relaying to us. And so like half the class really doesn't even go to lecture. I'm really struggling through my uh, microeconomics class. But, I mean, there's office hours, we have preceptors that can um, individually tutor us. And so, I mean, I'm, I'll get through it, hopefully. We have finals after break, which is super annoying. Someone else asked, what skateboard do I use? I made a whole review video about it, but I use an Acton Electric Skateboard Blink S2. It gets me to class super fast. It's about like $700, $800, but it's been one of the best investments I made throughout college because I'm zooming through campus. Do you mix the songs yourself when they're mashed up? I don't. I, Like I said, I just go on YouTube, finding some mashups. Um, SoundCloud is really great, just finding different users. I think I'll start linking more of the songs that I use throughout my videos so that you guys can go find it. I'll also maybe possibly link my Spotify playlist if you guys want to see like what I listen to. It's kind of random and I don't know if I want people seeing that. The pre <laughs> this is kind of funny, I'm gonna call you out. At the professor D-O-T-A, he says, are you homosexual? Also your forward is huge F, no offense. No, I'm not homosexual, I've had girlfriends in the past. Um, my forehead isn't that big, that kind of offends me. Another question about music is how I use music without it getting removed. So with copyright, I just realized this. I kind of screwed up in my day in the life video. I didn't realize that that was gonna get 50,000 views, but I used a copyrighted song. And so anytime you use something that has copyright, Basically, the whoever has the rights to it is gonna be playing ads on your video and then all the revenue is gonna go to them. So it kind of sucks that I lost out on that, but now that I know. So basically, if you wanna use a song you know it's copyrighted, then just know that you're not gonna be making money off of it. So if you think you're gonna get a lot of views, probably find something that is royalty free and won't get um, copyrighted. <laughs> Someone has, have you thought of a rap battle with Eminem? Um, yeah, of course, who wouldn't? Someone asked, wonder how tall you are. You look short, my son is two, LOL. Um, I'm actually 5'8", so. Are you gonna go to med school? No, I don't wanna be a doctor. Did I use score choice for my SAT subject test? I don't think I use score choice. I just I just sent my 750 Spanish and my math too, because those are the only ones that like were worth sending in. Okay, this is kind of a good one. Um, so in my how to get into the Ivy League video where I kind of talk about my stats and things like that, someone says, can anyone explain why he got rejected from the most of these schools? I mean, I get they're hard to get into, but Nicholas is as qualified as you can get. Why? So as far as like admissions and rejections and wait lists, it's all bullshit. <laughs> it's not bullshit. It's just that there's so many random variables that you can't control. And the admissions counselors are always looking for something different. Like no one's ever going to be able to tell you exactly we're going to be able to get into what exact scores you're going to need because it's all arbitrary like okay i feel like i've been rambling on this video for a while all right so kind of my last few things i want to touch up on are my goals for 2018 you know as i'm really starting to get into the hang of things and figuring out you know what i want to do not only with this channel but like academically at princeton i realized that yes filmmaking and photography and now this youtube thing are going to be a huge part of my life but at the same time 
I have to focus on my academics. My mom's literally gonna kill me if I don't do well this semester. So going forward, I'll try and film as much as I can over this break so I have footage to put out while I'm studying for finals um, right when I get back. You know, just know that academics are always my priority and um, obviously I'll try and make out as much content as I can. Um, but, you know, vlogs and stuff, like, vlogs are, uh, vlogs are always hard because college life is so repetitive. Like, I do the same thing every single day. Like, there's not much to it. I'm studying or I'm going to class or I'm eating or I'm sleeping. And, I mean, like, it's, it's not that interesting. So maybe what I'll do is, like, weekly vlogs, tutorials, fashion videos, just kind of anything that comes to mind. I kind of want to start veering a little bit more away from the college aspect of things just because I mean you guys are already done like there's no point in listening to that maybe like once decisions start rolling out I'll make more videos about that kind of stuff but as of right now I kind of want to focus more on just the creative outlet that I want to cultivate so yeah kind of my last request is that you know leave comments down below of what kind of videos you guys want to see um, how you guys have enjoyed the content over the past few days um, you know what you look forward to in the new year and so yeah, I just want to say shout out to my new subscribers thanks for supporting me to my old subscribers who have been here since before I was hitting 1000 you know shout out to you guys you guys are the OG gang um, and yeah that's about it I'll see you guys next time